Okay, let's make sure we've got our volume up here. I'm sure you all can hear me. I hope you can hear me. Can you hear me here? Can you hear me? Yes, you can hear me. Okay. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to BWTM Sports. As I say, as always, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do hit the subscribe button. Please check that you've hit the notification bell to make sure you can see all the latest videos and news on the channel. So as you know, yesterday I was informed by one of our fantastic supporters and viewers that um, they broke that Matt Koroboff and Chris Shubank have agreed to sign to fight. Well, ironically, after that call was made, um, or I was told about it, because, you know, people say things, you think, nah, maybe that's not true. And of course, this is now an update video. So um, I haven't even done a preview video, but an update video is this. So you'll get an exclusive here before the media get it. Um, I've just been talking to Matt Koroboff's trainer. And the reason why I was able to talk to Matt Koroboff's trainer is because I also know Matt Koroboff's trainer is also Bermain Stavern's trainer. And he also was, Matt Koroboff's trainer was also the trainer that trained Tony Thompson to beat David Price twice when they came over from America to the UK. Now, when I first heard about the, the fight, I thought it was absolutely ridiculous matchmaking. I thought to myself, as soon as I heard it, I thought, Matt Koroboff, the Matt Koroboff against Chris Eubank Jr. Well, first of all, Koroboff's the southpaw. From what I remember, he's a southpaw. Um, big punching, good boxer, just finished fighting Charlo. Some people thought that he beat Charlo. So it was a very uh, interesting situation. Um, you know, the fact that Eubank wants to fire him, but on your debut in America against Matt Koroboff, the style is completely all wrong for Eubank, a southpaw who moves and has got a, a decorated amateur career, former world champion. He might be getting a little older now. I think that's maybe why they're taking the fight. But on your debut in America, where you are a brawler, you're not known for your boxing skills, and you're going to come, come to try and brawl against a superior boxer in America, it's all very ugly. And whoever whoever did this matchmaker is one of two things, well, three things. They know something about Matt Korobov. They haven't done their history work on, on studying Matt Korobov. Or it's more than that. Or they're trying to set Chris Eubank Jr. up. Because this fight, um, Eubank just can't brawl his way to victory. He's not the biggest puncher. He was never the biggest puncher at super middleweight. And at middleweight, he isn't a, he, he's a better puncher, but not a great puncher. And Matt Koroboff carries a very good chin and can punch, you know. So, um, you know, he, it's a good fight. It's a good fight, but bad matchmaking as far as I'm concerned for, for Eubank. A stylistically a nightmare. And it looks like Eubank's already set up to fail to go and fight in America against Matt Koroboff. Um, but anyway, I spoke to his trainer, Charles Mooney, and he'll be on the channel. I uh, will get an interview, exclusive interview with him, and we will probably get an interview with Matt Koroboff as well talking about the fight but he said his words this fight is perfect for us um it's bad for eubank jr stylistically it's a nightmare for eubank jr and uh, we're looking he's coming to america and we're looking to send him packing so you know uh they and uh they, they know this is a great opportunity for them and to get themselves back in the middleweight picture as for eubank moving from middle super middleweight down to middleweight i thought we had a fight happening with um my boy, the uh, the guy who's fighting uh, Callum Johnson, uh, Callum Smith now. Um, and I can see now he's from Islington. And I like the boy so much. Um, I can't remember the guy's name from Islington now. I can see him now. And I like him so much. I think he's a really good boxer. And he's come, improved so much. Oh, I can't remember his name. You'll tell me who he is. Somebody will remind me who he is. John Ryder. That's it. John Ryder. John Ryder and Chris Eubank Jr. went to fight. That fight sort of fell through. And John Ryder is now fighting Callum, Callum Smith. And now Eubank's going to be fighting um, Matt Koroboff. Dangerous fight for Chris Eubank Jr. You know, and I asked myself the question. If this was Usyk, if this was um, Lomachenko, um, you know, would these guys be fighting on their debut against this type of opponent? Or Canelo on their debut 
this kind of opponent. Hell no. They'll be getting an opponent. They'll be fighting a patsy or somebody we know was a knockover job. This fight for you, bad coming to America and his career, as far as I'm concerned, is in tatters as it is. Why? Because of the high expectation his father put of him. You know, he's going to be better than Mayweather. You know, he's next generation. He's, he, you know, he's going to be better than this and he's going to do this and he's going to do that. He's going to, John Ryder, thank you for the reminder. He's going to do this and he's going to do that. And he's going to do this. He's going to do all these great things. And he's got found out by Billy Joe Saunders. He got found out by George Groves. Um, so really and truly, and yeah, he won against James DeGale, but DeGale was shot, shot, shot. So, you know, I just think that this is a guy whose career is in tatters and he needs the opportunity to get himself back into world. People talk about him in, in, in the elite level and, and talk about him seriously. And yes, all full credit should be taking the Matt Corrible fight. But on your American debut, on your American debut, this guy. Well, Matt Korobov's not gonna. Matt Korobov's not gonna lay down for anybody. Matt Korobov's certainly not gonna lay down for anybody. Matt Korobov's gonna come to fight, and you saw with a uh, Jamal Charlo how dangerous Matt Korobov is. Uh, you know, and they're talk people talk about a potential fight between Eubank and Matt Korobov. Now I don't know, not, uh, and uh, Charlo. Now, I don't know who is, who's the ticket seller between these two, Matt Korobov or Chris Eubank Jr. Do they believe they can sell Chris Eubank Jr. to American public? Or do you believe they can sell Matt Korobov to uh, American public? Matt Chris Eubank Jr. has got his father, you know, who's a, a legendary super middleweight fighter. Um, he's eccentric and all the rest of it. They've got the connection with the Mayweathers. Maybe Eubank's going to rebuild his career in America. I don't know. We've got Matt Korobov, former WBO champion. I don't know. And when I ask this question, I ask this question because of business. So whose business sense does this make? Does this make more business sense for Matt Korobov, trying to come back and get a big win against a well-known middleweight? Or does it make business sense for Chris Eubank to come back and get a win against a good middleweight? Because if you ask this question, who's Eubank's best win? You would start scratching and saying, well, I shot James DeGale or an ancient Arthur Abraham. Those would probably be his two best wins that come to spring to mind to me. His loss against Billy Joe Saunders, George Groves, um, you know, those losses uh, have shown that he's not. Did he lose somebody else as well? I'm sure he did. He? I'm sure he lost somebody else. Maybe he didn't. But those those losses have shown that he's not at that level. Do you understand? Um, and Matt Corobos has, has got a great amateur pedigree and a good fighter. So we'll see. We'll see. But um, we'll just wait and see what um, Charles Mooney has to say about Chris Eubank and how they're going to go about that fight. But um, Eubank knows that just brawling is not going to be enough against uh, Matt Korobov. Uh, Eubank, you, Korobov is no joke, but maybe Eubank got him at the right time. Well, did Charla get him at the right time? Do you think Charla got him at the right time? I don't think Korobov's declined that much. Korobov's not one to be smoking, drinking out, partying and reckless. So, I mean, he's... You know, Korobov's a good fighter. He might have got him at a good time, but he might have got him at a bad time. And I think he's got more of a bad time than a good time um, for me. You bet can't box. What are you talking about? You bet being more relentless. Relentless against who? Who? Who is relentless against George Groves? What happened to him? George goes to be George got by his arm at his, and had one arm at his socket. And he still was able to do you know, you back in one arm. I mean, come on, man. So Eubank is uh, you know, Eubank is not a puncher as far as I'm concerned. And um and Eubank, and, and the thing is, Eubank's fighting Korobov. Korobov's the south, from what I remember, Korobov's the southpaw. Eubank doesn't do well against southpaws. 
Eubank historically hasn't done well against South Balls. The South Ball style has given Eubank so many problems. Eubank hasn't got a fundamental base of boxing, right? I don't care how relentless you are. You've seen once you put a jab on Eubank, it shuts him completely down. So now I, I, I don't see where Eubank has improved so much for people to have this belief about Eubank. People seem to forget basic boxing fundamentals and just talk about names. There's a reason why these guys lose their fights. You know, and I've seen nothing. And if anyone's going to say me, Eubank's improved, well, show me where he's improved, what he's done to improve. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't subscribe to, you know, uh, Charlo is, uh, I think Charlo is better skilled, better skilled than, than Eubank personally. And he's, he's more fundamental, better boxer than Eubank. He throws a jab, the right hand, the left hook, the uppercut, puts his punches together. He has a solid base in which he does his work from. Eubank is unorthodox. He doesn't know how to set up the jab and put punches behind it. He has no sort of, you know, Eubank has got no sort of, uh, he's got no fundamentals. When you talk about boxing, he's got no boxing fundamentals. He's got a good chin and he's just um, trying to use physical strength and, and trying to put that on fighters. A guy, Matt, Matt Horrell, has really been round the block. He'll know what he needs to do. And I don't think that Eubank punches any harder than uh, Jamal, Jamal Charlo. I'm sorry. Uh, look at Korobov against Uzgate. Uz, Uzgate. Uh, Korobov schooled him. From a matchmaking perspective, it's a risk. You, you fight, but as a fan, I love it. Of course. Listen, you bank ain't listen. If you if you can sit, I, it's amazing how people can sit there and actually believe rubbish. Some fighters, no matter what train you give them, no matter what train you give them, they are not going to improve because they don't listen because they think they know it all. Any man that believes that he trains himself, any man that believes he doesn't need a trainer, and any man can sit down in the middle of a fight, turn around and tell his trainer, shut up. It just that that's enough. That's enough to tell you. And that's why this man hasn't improved. And even in the George Groves fight, before the fight, and everyone was talking about Eubank's going to win this fight. And I just watched the way Groves was doing his shadow boxing. And I watched the way Eubank his shadow boxing. I said, nah, Eubank going to win this fight. Because Eubank was doing the same stuff he was doing leading up to the Groves fight, which is no improvements. So um, I, I, I just deal with the reality of things. I, when I talk, I talk about the reality of things. I don't put things out to be something that is not there and I don't um I don't add things onto fighters just because I've got an opinion. I don't give them extra attributes because I just want them to win the fight. I just look at what they do mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And when I look at Chris Eubank Jr, I don't see a guy that will accept that he needs to be taught. And Virgil Hunter, as far as I'm concerned, outside Andre Ward what has Virgil Hunter done for anybody? True words. Virgil Hunter is the guy you go to if you get knocked out, right? It used to be Emmanuel Stewart was the guy you go to when your career's in tatters. You'd be knocked out. You'd be beat. Emmanuel Stewart would get you back in the road and get you to your world championship. That guy now becomes Virgil Hunter. Virgil Hunter, when you get knocked out after fighting for Freddie Roach or fighting for some other trainer and you've been floored, you get knocked out. You come to a Virgil Hunter. Virgil Hunter is the guy that whispers in your ear, you know, gives you a nice stroke in your neck and, and strokes your ego and makes you feel good. But technically, but basically, if you're honest, Virgil Hunter, you know, no disrespect to Virgil Hunter, but his, his trump card is Andre Ward. That's what it is. Eubank doesn't need, Eubank doesn't need any, um, Eubank doesn't need, it don't, there's some people in this world that it would be footballers, cricketers, boxers, rugby players, they're uncoachable. And if you're uncoachable, that's a problem. When you want to do things your own way, then your 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 climbing development becomes one which is stunted. You know, think about when Eubank fought you Billy Joe Saunders and fight it, but think about where Eubank Jr. is now. And apart from him getting bigger, how much improvements have you seen in Chris Eubank Jr.? Then if you look at someone like Dillian White when he started his career, then when he got beat by Joshua. And look where Dillian White is now. I'm talking technically. I'm not talking about no B sample. 
because these samples do not teach you how to throw a jab. These samples do not show you how to throw a right hand. These samples do not give you how to throw uppercut. And these samples do not teach you how to move in and out and move from side to side or give your boxing brain. OK, so I don't want to hear no nonsense from no B sample stuff. Right. Boxing fundamentals, jab, right hand, uppercut, left hook. So. That's so when people when people talk about Virgil Hunter, it's not disrespectful. Yeah, more. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. It could put more pop in your left hook. I appreciate that to a point. But if you can't throw left hook, it's no good. It don't make no sense, does it? Of course, White has improved as a fighter. Anybody who sits down and tells me Dillian White has not improved as a fighter doesn't know boxing. And Mark Tibbs is the reason behind that. So there's a guy that's improved because you've seen how he's moved through, he's improved from where he was to where he is. Eubank Jr. has not shown that improvement. Well, we'll see. But I don't think Eubank is that good. I like Chris Eubank Jr. I do like him. and He's, he's my neighbour. He's just down the road from me. But because he's my neighbour, he's just down the road, um, doesn't mean that I I lose track of what he does. So I just try and be honest. Would I like him to win? I'd like him to win based on the factors that he's improved. I'd like him to win because he's um, he's listened to his trainer and he's now taken some instructions in. But I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, you at BWTM once again will be treated to another interview with another top class trainer, Charles Mooney, who knows his boxing, who was an Olympian, uh, one of the best Olympic teams from the USA. And he was there. So you'll have Charles Mooney in the house talking exclusively to BWTM Sports. Again, we bring you those big names to the channel. So it won't be just me sitting here talking a whole lot of waffle. You'll get him on the channel. Hope you're well. Uh, so, yeah, that's where we're at with it. Please smash the like button while you're in the room, please. Um, yeah, so that's it. I can't stay much longer and talk about this because um, I've got some things to do. But, um, you know, I just want to say that um, I am looking forward to the fight. I think it's a fantastic fight. Um, you know, and and but... I don't think those names, Usyk, Lomachenko, any of those guys will um, will have got an, a, 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 an opening fight like this. So I don't know. I don't know. I wonder how it, how how easy it is to negotiate a fight for Chris Eubank Jr. and what his actual value is like now. And if this fight is going to be ITV boxing or not, what happened on the ITV deal and all the rest of it. Um, I'm going to talk about. I don't even want. To, I will talk about Lomachenko franchise as well. I'll talk about that as well. But um, yeah, of course, pay per view. Pay per view is where the money is in it. So that's where it's out. So he will always try and get the best deal for his son, which is right. He try and get the best deal for his son because he knows how he was treated when he was world champion or when he was a fighter. Yeah, I totally agree with you. I don't beat. I don't believe he beats Matt Korobov either. But stranger things have happened. Right, I'm out of here. I'll talk to you all later. Hope you've enjoyed the videos. I'll see you soon. All the best.